Greetings, good people. Hola, mi gente. I hope that you've been getting a lot out of the uh, classes, lessons that I've been posting. Uh, it's several lessons, uh, six in total, that are from a time a few years ago when I was helping, assisting in the singles ministry, the amazing singles ministry of the New York Church of Christ's New Jersey region. I said it in my other intros. I'll say it again as I post this lesson. And this lesson is from Jason Rain from the uh, Los Angeles Church. I believe the full name is Los Angeles International Church of Christ. So I've said this before. I will emphasize again that as much as the context of this lesson was to a leadership group within the singles ministry, you in no way have to be single to get a lot from this message. You don't have to have any formal leadership position or responsibility or role for this message to move you and get to your soul. I would encourage you, if you're looking for substance, you're looking for something deep from the scriptures that uh, will help you along so you're in the right place. Jason, uh, I had the honor of um, you know knowing him, and I do know him, of course, still know him. Uh, but getting to know him, uh, especially during the pandemic period when a lot of things were online and we were on Zoom, that's where we first connected. And he was super gracious so many different times, despite the time zone, the time difference, and, and his own incredibly busy international schedule to make time to speak to us. And now you all get to hear from him. And so here is Jason Rain speaking on dealing with discouragement and disappointment. Thank you, Quadre. Uh, I just feel honored. Um, it was, I got the call um, from Rice when I was actually in Florida um, visiting one of our other church families. And uh, it, you know, when he got the, when he called me and just kind of shared just about you guys in the church here it just it just really shows god's favor um and just even to be available tonight um i be like you shared i became a disciple in 2010 and this topic of discouragement and disappointments um if you guys knew what was going around my house right now i'll just share with you guys there's a plumber trying to figure out why the water ain't flowing and it's just like literally right before i I got on to jump with you guys. I was meeting with the plumber and a family friend of ours because, you know, if you can't turn the shower on, you know, I tried to, you know, got the hair going, but it was, you know, it's just a disappointment, something I wasn't expecting to come home to after being out of town. Um, but that's, I think that's really where God works in this story. And I wanted to share just a few stories and talk about uh, a few scriptures that have just been on my heart uh, through tonight and just kind of share how this topic uh, as leaders um, and even more as disciples that we get a deal um, and kind of, in a sense, work through the discouragement that happens in our lives. Um, you know, I can share I was baptized in 2010, but there's only one brother left out of the five guys that I studied the Bible with that's still actually a member of our church. Um, three of them fell away, are no longer pra practicing Christianity, completely walked away from God. Um, and one of them is going to another church, um, which, you know, I'm grateful that he's still plugged into, into the Christian family. But there's really only one person that helped me really find out what it means to have a personal relationship with God. And that's, I will tell you, as all of us have walked through our faith as leaders and connected with different people, to have people walk away from the church is probably one of the most discouraging things that can ever happen in any of our lives. Because there's so much where we spend time with them. We get to study the Bible with them and just connect with them in a way that's so different than connecting with a colleague or a coworker or in different, different things like that. And one of the scriptures that I think that's always really helped me in this and why I always like to share it, it's the one out of 1 Timothy. And it's chapter 4, verse 16. And it talks so much about just what it means, you know, to really share in our area, but really to, you know, uh, look 
in our lives about life and doctrine. And so, you know, I'm going old school. I had to open the paper Bible and I hate it when the, uh, when the little thing falls out <laughs> in your scripture, you're like, Oh man, it came out. Uh, give me just a second and I'll get there for all of us. Cause I think any time that we talk about this, definitely going through, you know, disappointments and other things in our lives, the biggest part is to really remember, um, the, why we all do this in the first place, definitely as leaders, but even more as disciples. It says, watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. And I think this is the biggest part, is one of the biggest lessons I've learned when just diving into the Bible and working through this. It's not how when we share who God is in our lives, in the moments when the lights are on, the moments of opportunity to get to sharing to who God is, it's when it's in the darkest times, when we didn't get the job, when we didn't get that relationship, or the person that we were studying the Bible chose not to believe in who God is and to connect who God is in our lives. Like, I think it's those how our life come, becomes more evident, and even more how when we deal with those situations. I can tell you guys that for me, um, the whole season of life that I went through and we all looked at last year at 2020, right? I think if you were to take this topic and put disappointments and discouragements on top of a year, I think there's not a year that would be unprecedented that we can all sit at and go, yeah, I, I think something happened. I think there was some discouraging times that happened within that. But I also can tell you for me, 2020 was a year that I actually didn't, I saw disappointments, but I saw something that God worked in my life in a completely opposite way. This might surprise you guys, but as 2020 happened, I remembered a message that my pastor was giving, and he was talking so much on what does it look like in our life, in our doctrine? If someone were to see me on social media, would it be the same presence of what they saw if they met me in real life? And it really challenged me as I went and looked at my Facebook and I went and looked at my Instagram to go and see what was that message I was sharing. Well, I saw a message of, I loved outdoors. You saw sunrises, you saw my family, you saw everything in my life, but what you didn't see was how much I loved God. And so I was like, well, in all of these seasons, you also didn't see disappointments in my life. You didn't see the things that I was going through that God was teaching me. You didn't see the failed relationships. You didn't see the disappointments where I didn't get the job or I did get the job. You know, those are the things that you saw. And the part of it that I really had to think about in those relationships and those things of my image is the only thing I can do is to be able to be, to share in each aspect of my life. And so ultimately what I did in 2020 was take a look at who I was. And I was like, you know what? I need to start sharing more in all aspects, in my leadership, in my servanthood, in my disappointments, in my happiness, in my happy times, just in all different parts of my life. Well, I was like, I can do this on Facebook or I can do this on Instagram. And I'm like, those are great things, but those are all my friends and family. And I really was trying to live out the scripture of even in these darkest of times, are there people that I'm sharing my faith with and connecting with that are not just in my family group or in my small group? Who, who are they and where are they? Well, a new app was out there and it was kind of starting to explode. And this is what, you know, you kind of do when you're crazy and you're like, all right, I'm going all out. I'm going to do it. So I jumped on the new app that made world news called TikTok. And I was like, you know what? I get only 60 seconds to share who I am. And I'm like, I'm just going to go for it. And so what I started to do it was just sharing one minute videos. If I was having a good day, if I was having a bad day, some of it was just about work. Some of it was the funniness of the pandemic. Cause I shared a funny video about, you know, using hand sanitizer, but I was like, you know what? I just wanted to be able to share who I was in every moment of my life. And what I saw in this was, I started connecting with different people and from the different messages, from the different parts of that. And that's where God like started to really allow some of those moments of like, I'm stuck in my room. I can't go anywhere. I can't even go to dinner with my friends. I can't even connect, 
and just the discouragement and all of that that was piled on top of it to be like, wait, you do have friends. Just in the same way that, you know, if I would have got the phone call that said, hey, on a Tuesday night, can you come do a message for the New Jersey singles? I'd be like, that's a hard plane ticket. Like, you know, <laughs> let, me, let me talk to my boss and see if I can get out there. But with technology and how God worked this out, this now became a norm that is so easy in a way for us to share a message. And as leaders, I, I think that's a part of it, even for me, that I really had to look at is how do I meet with people and connect with different people in a way, you know, that I got the opportunity to share who I am both in everything uh, and with everything going on. And I think that was my brother that was walking in um, <laughs> to tell me what's going on, but I'll wave him off till later. Uh, but uh, it was funny. I heard the door open behind me and it's like, you're like, wait, who's walking in? <laughs> Uh, but I think that's the part of it is when we think through those disappointments in our lives, you know, I can share even before the pandemic that happened, um, I really had like the biggest thing that God really showed me was I was applying for a job within my career. And this job was requiring me to move out of state, move away from my family to, you know, basically it was the next step. And I went all for it. I applied for it. I flew out there. I went for the interview and did everything that I was supposed to do to get the job. And it was one of those things I was like, I didn't really know what I was walking away from. It's walking away from my faith family, the one that I was baptized and grew up with my whole life, you know, with, within the church. I was walking away from my physical family, who was all here in California. And I was, I really didn't understand the choices that I was making by trying to do that. And, and I still remember when I got the phone call that I wasn't accepted and that I was like, what did I do? Like I internalized it, like in the sense of like, what did I do wrong? Like, was I overqualified? Was I underqualified? Like, you know, a lot of times when we don't get those jobs or we don't get those promotions in life, we start asking questions of like, what did I do wrong? Or we think about the other side of it, of a failed relationship. You know, why didn't, when I was studying the Bible with someone, why didn't, did I say something wrong? Did they not believe who Jesus was? Did my life and my doctrine not match what I was saying or how I was, you know, sharing the word? Or, you know, we take all of that on ourselves versus going, maybe it just wasn't the right season and God was just having us plant the seed. And like for me and my job, what I didn't know is there was a full other another story that was being written. I fast forward from getting that no in my life to my boss's boss calling me at the end of the year, uh, 2019 to say, hey, um, I saw that you applied for that job. How about you come and work for me in this role, which is even a step above the job that I was applying for. And I was like, I was blown away. I was like, wait, you want me to take this job in LA? That's even better than the one I was applying to move for out of state. Like, what are you doing? Like <laughs> I was, I was literally blown away that I was get, given an opportunity to not only grow professionally, but to stay where I'm planted and to know that God was opening the door for something that I had no clue what was in the works, but I was willing to be you know what? I'll take the no and the answer. And I, there's some cuteness walking in. My brother's niece is here. She's all surprising me. Um, one sec. Yeah. For about another 10, 15 minutes. I, oh, where'd mom go? I'm, I'm doing a lesson. Someone walked in on me, guys. <laughs> this is what family. Um, but yeah. Great, um, great to have her here. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll get that in a second. See, and that's where family and everything happens. I had cuteness walk in. Um, but this is where life is, right? And everything that's going on is, you know, I could let something like this where, you know, my brother and everything were trying to take care of the plumbing at the house be such a discouragement and be such a moment that it's like, I like you could let life just totally be like, you know what? 
I can't do this. Sorry, Rice, going to put you in a bad spot. I got to bail. But this is where it's like in this whole situation, I know I can trust God. I know my brother sees what I'm doing. I know that my little one, his, my niece, his little one will be taken care of. And I'll go and clean up the mess here in a little bit. And I think that's a part of it where no matter what's going on and what's happening in our lives, that there is a piece of it that we all, as we walk through the discouragements of life and the disappointments that happen, that there's a part of it as we come back to the scriptures and really start to look at the relationship, like for me, the relationship with the Father in heaven. Because I think there's a part of it that I know I'm able to go through the discouragements in life, the disappointments, the interruptions, right? I could have let that interruption that happened been something be that like, okay, God, what are you doing right now? You know, and sometimes when we look at interruptions in our lives, are we really looking at the response and how that we respond to them? Because as, as I got that new job and really saw how God started to work, and it was like, well, wait, I didn't move away from my church family. I didn't have to move away from my physical family. And even more on top of that, it was a better job than what I was actually applying for. And, and that's the part of it. It's what my boss saw in me is when I got the no that the other position, I didn't go and be like, oh my goodness, there is, and I'm, yes, pun intended, there is a rain cloud over me, you know, totally taking me out. I would, he, what he saw was when I got the no answer, I worked even harder to try to go, okay, you know what? I have the job that I have now. And I have the position that he's allowed me to be in for a reason. And I'm going to keep trusting that that next door is going to be opened. And that's what got his attention. Not that I wasn't already qualified for the position that I was going for, but it was how I responded when I got the no. And I think there's a big part of it that definitely when we talk about the discouragement and the disappointments in our lives, we have to also talk about the relationships in our lives. And how we work through those. Um, a few of my friends that are on today are here from a Christian community group that I'm a part of. And we've had a lot of great conversations around relationships. And as we were talking about the relationships in our lives, we really got to see how God was allowing each one of these relationships to allow people to speak into our lives, but also to help us through you know, ultimately, I loved one of the best acronyms. One of the actually it was Jen who shared it with me. Um, any of sport fans out there, I think you're going to love this one. It's called ESPN, you know, and I love the acronym that she shared. And it was great that even the activity that we were doing was talking about leaders and, you know, different acronyms, words that really, you know, as we spoke about earlier is in prayer, that there's also a part of this acronym that I really enjoyed within relationships. And within the acronym of ESPN that I really like that actually Jen shared earlier is the E is for encouragement. Because we know when we go through discouragement or a disappointment in our lives that we, we need a little bit of encouragement, you know, and, and the S is after the encouragement is really just diving into the scriptures and really sharing in the scriptures because ultimately, you know, we're all sharing from our own life stories, from the opinions and the things that we have going on. But when we take it back to God's word and we take it to the scriptures, we really get to see God's encouragement, the way that he's lifting us up, the way that he connects with us. And I think there's a big part of it is a, a lesson that I watched a little while ago. I love the way that he shared this is sometimes we have to think about it is the mess in life that we go through gets to become the message that we get to share to let that sit in for a second. It's the mess that we go through allows us to be the message that we get to share. And each one of us in our own story, in our own lives of discouragement, disappointments, failed opportunities, missed opportunities, that there's a part of all of that, that in our own story that God allows us to share. And I think that's the big point of it as we look in those moments in life they're only moments disappointment it happens and then it goes on 
you know, I think another part of it is we look at is, you know, when, when I, I like the scripture that says, when we go through the, you know, the valley of the shadow of death, like on the other side of that valley is another mountaintop. And how do we share in that moment? Do we always just stay in the valley or are we willing to climb to that next mountaintop? And I think there's a part of it as in between those valleys and mountaintops of those, you know, basically stories in life that we come across amazing relationships. I think about everybody who's here tonight. There was an investment in a relationship. There was an investment of your personal relationship with who Christ is in your life, but there was also an investment in the group that was here. Because it's these relationships, it's these connections in life that not only help us grow, but they help us when we're in those moments. You know, when we fall, when we're down, you know, when I'm dealing with a plumber, I get the amazing opportunity of my twin. You know, if you guys would have seen him, you would have thought there was two of me, but my twin brother was here, you know, and helping with that whole experience and helping with that things like he, you know, the discouragement of not being able to flush the toilet, which is pretty discouraging. You know, I got to have him here. And I had, you know, like my other friends that are here tonight, you know, Jen and Melanie that were able to join, you know, I get to be able to share in this moment of sharing that who God is. And how powerful he is in my life through some of the areas that, I, that they know me from and what I've connected through of, you know, just failures of past relationships, things that didn't work out. And as I talk about relationships, I kind of wanted to give, you know, I'm going to kind of rapid fire a couple of scriptures here uh, as we think about kind of some of these things in our lives. And, and I share these scriptures because I think it was a great reminder for me as I was diving into this lesson and really thinking about the discouragements in my life, the way how I looked back, I kept looking over my shoulder, trying to figure out some of the things that were behind me and going, well, wait, one of my biggest discouragements in life, which has actually been one of the most fruitful things in my life, especially looking last year is, you know, for all of us, I'm like, man, why am I single still? God, what have you done? Why is this something that I, that's just, I can't figure out, but I saw that discouragement be something that's been so fruitful and evident in my life. Last year, as even in my singleness, I didn't think anything about it. When God opened the door for me to jump on the mission field in the middle of COVID, I left LA, hopped on a plane and flew over to Serbia. And I was in Serbia for a little bit over 10 days. And, and I still remember that is I was like, well, wait, if I was married, if I had a kid, if I had a family, would I have been able to, in the middle of a pandemic, go, you know what, I'm going to go jump and serve God? Am I going to let this discouragement of COVID shut me down from serving and loving on people all around the world? And I was like, no, I'm not. But I also think that happened because God allowed me to be in that perfect season, that he allowed me to see who he is. He allowed me to be in a personal relationship with him. I love the scripture out of Hebrews chapter three, verses 12 through 14. And it talks about daily contact with one another. And this is not only daily contact with one, one anothering, as I call it, you know, the, your brothers and sisters in faith, but it's also a daily contact with the Lord. Like, what is your plan for that? I can share for me, there's times where it's like, it's easy. I can pull up the Bible app, I can pull up my phone, or I can talk to other friends and get into the word and have that personal relationship with who God is. But then there's also other times where it's like, today, I'll be real, it was a little hard, because <laughs> I'm like, all right, the plumber's coming at 730. I got the follow up plumber for the second later, I got hanging out with you guys in New Jersey. And, and it was like, part of it, it's like, how do I have that intentional daily relationship? And that's the big part. The other big part about being in a great relationship and going through these things is remembering the part that we all need, right? I love the acronym and the, the, the word that we were talking about earlier is what are the leadership qualities that we use the word prayer? You know, I love the scripture out of Ephesians chapter six, verse 18, where it says we need to pray for one another daily. I think that's the biggest thing that we can ask in for each other's faiths is when we're going through those disappointments in life, are we willing to be open with the disappointments in life to ask someone to pray for them? 
because there's a part of it that even being able to share when things aren't going right, when those disappointments in life happen, that we're okay to tell our closest friends, our closest families, hey, this didn't work out. I didn't get the job. I didn't get that promotion. That relationship didn't work out. The person that I was studying the Bible with chose that this wasn't the right season for them to be in a personal relationship with God. You know, but how are we asking for people to pray for those? The other part of it, too, about being in an amazing relationship and working through these things is also seeing the best in one another. I know for me, I'm not perfect, nor will ever be. And I love that being able to be able to say it because I know that Jesus is perfect in our lives and he gets to give us just that amazing gift to know that it's okay, that there are things that I'm going to be disappointed with. And there are going to be things that I'm not ultimately not connected with, or that, you know, I, I always love saying it, especially in prayer. I know G Jesus is not a genie. I don't get to rub the top of the lamp and go, all right, Jesus, give it to me, you know? And I get to just think about those things because I know I want them to be sometimes. I know I want to be like, all right, I didn't study for the test, but Jesus, I'm going to pray right now. Help me get an A on this test. But I think there's a part of it that where we get that true opportunity to pray for one another, that that is such a huge piece of it. And I think the last thing that you guys have so valiantly even today shown is you're making every effort to know who God is, to know who Jesus is, to connect with your community, your family. And in Ephesians, um, it's chapter four, verse three. I think there's a huge part of it is we have to make every effort to know who the spirit is, to know who God is in our lives. And, and I think there's a powerful piece in that as we look at Ephesians, so it says, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. And I think there's a huge part in this, you know, as we think through the things in our lives, I know discouragement and disappointment is right around the corner for me. It's life. I know there is no way that I can live on top of a mountaintop and live in such a perfect unity with Christ that life is going to be perfect, that everything that I want is going to go the way that I want it to go. And I think for all of us, the question as leaders and as disciples in our, in our life is to think about how are we going to handle those discouragement and disappointments in our life? Are we going to just go into our rooms, in our houses? close the door and not let anybody know what's going on? Or are we willing to share in that discouragement, in that disappointment, when things aren't going right, to be in great relationships with God, but also with those around us? Because I can tell you guys, even for me, even through all the seasons of ministry and everything that I've been in, one of the hardest dis discouragements I had as a leader was when I had my minister come to me and say, hey, Jason, I just need you to be a disciple right now. I need you to just love God. Because even though you're doing all these amazing things for God and you're loving him and connecting with him and you're leading his people, I just see that you're doing it as a work. You're coming in, you're checking a box, you're doing the things that you're doing, but you're not doing it with the true love of who Jesus is. And I'm grateful that I had a, an evangelist in my life that was willing to say, you know what, I'd rather you just be a disciple of Jesus than serve and do all the things that you're doing. Because what he was doing for me that I didn't know at the time was, pre was preventing my burnout of faith. Because there was so much that went on through the different discouragements, people not wanting to study the Bible, you know, the passing of my grandmother, the, you know, different things in life that happened. Um, and my, you know, my, my grandmother and then my grandfather and my mom's side both passed like all at the same time. And then a relationship didn't work out. And then, you know, the ministry was going through different things. And, and I just, he could tell that I wasn't having the full spirit of who Jesus was. And he's like, what I want you to do is just to love God. And that's hard for any leader to be like, wow, like, all right, but that's where I share that story with you guys is because there's sometimes we do need to step back and really think where we're at in our relationship with Jesus. And I remember that story so much as, as I was coming in basically for a close to share this guys is because that 
season in my life about five, six years ago is what helped me to main, to basically be a disciple today. Because what I didn't notice as soon as I stepped back and was just practicing my faith and being a disciple and just living the Christian life is when I really started to see how many things that I was doing to go, I know I got to be at church. I know I have our staff meeting. I know I have this. I know I have this where I really saw all the discouragements in my life. And what I did was I covered them with what I thought was all the right things. And it was in that moment that I saw, I'm grateful for being a single brother. I'm grateful that God allows me to be a full-time volunteer leader. I'm grateful that God has said no to me more times than I want to believe, but I'm grateful for those no's. And I'm grateful for where he has me today, because I think that's a reason where when I see now, when I look back at all the yeses in my life, I know it was God that opened every door and opened every yes. And also it's the ones that opened for me to be here tonight with you guys. So my thought and kind of final piece to close for you guys is, is in this lesson is to just think about all the yeses that God has had in your life to bring you here today, but also be willing to share in all the no's that also has allowed your story to share who you are today.